In this video, we're going to add order items to our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Lilder here from Codemy.com. And in the last video, we generated orders for our e-commerce app. In this video, we want to add the order items to those orders. So if you remember, we have an order model and we have an order items model. In this video, we're going to take the order items and add them to the order. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so before we get started, let's head back over to our website and let's go to the admin section real quick and just take a quick look at our orders. This is just our order. And then what we want to look at in this video is the order items. And you remember the order items are the items of our order. So the order is just like the overwhelming umbrella order. Inside of that order, there are different items. So if you ordered three different books, that would be three different items. And each book will have the product, right? The name of the book, the user if you're logged in or nothing if you're not, and then how many of them you're going to buy and then the price you paid, right? So we need to add these in whenever we hit the checkout system. So just to recap that super fast, head to the website, we've got, let's see, one of these guys. Let's come back over here and let's also add something that's on sale. We're going to need one of those. So it's $6.99. Let's add that to cart. We click the cart thing. We come down, we check out, we fill out our shipping stuff if we haven't already. We go to billing, we enter our credit card stuff, which we haven't done yet, but we still need something here. And then we click pay now and an order is generated. Now we're getting, let's see, it looks like an error. What's going on here? Oh, and boom, there we go. So let's go back to our admin section, make sure that went through enough order for but now none of the order items now 2897 that looks like what it is let's just make sure go to local host colon 8000 and 2897 2897 okay so that's great so let's head over to our code here and inside of our process orders in the last video we did all of that we just we created the order and if the user is logged in, we create an order right here. If they're not, we create an order down here and then we redirect them. Well, now let's add order items. If we look at our models.py file and we look at our order system and our order items, we need an order, which is a foreign key on our order model that we just created. We need a product, which is also a foreign key on our product. We need the user if the user is logged in, which is also a foreign key. And then we need the quantity and the price. Well, the product is in our shopping cart, right? The quantity is also in our shopping cart and the price we can pull out of our product, right? So we need to get all of these things. So let's come over here and first let's get the order ID. So in the last video, we created the actual order right here. We're creating an order. We're passing in the user, the full name, uh, the shipping address, and the amount paid. That order, we now need to grab. We need to get an instance of that order. Well, we already know what it is because we just created it right here, but we need to reference it as a foreign key. And to do that, we need its ID number, right? Remember, Django creates IDs for models automatically. We have a user ID, we have a product ID, we have now the order ID. So we can get that by just calling it. So let's call this the order underscore ID and let's set that equal to this create order that we just created. Create order dot PK. PK stands for primary key. That's basically the order ID number, right? So, okay, we've got that. That is this thing right here. We can now pass that in. Now we need the product. Well, what's our product? Let's say get product ID. We can get that from our shopping cart. Right here is our cart products. We're pulling this right out of our shopping cart. So cart products, there's going to be multiple things in there. There might be one item, there might be 10 items, right? So we're going to have to loop through our cart and grab all the product ID numbers. So let's come over here and let's go for product in our cart products. So this is a method. So we use our parentheses there. And 
let's just create a variable called product underscore ID, and we'll set that equal to our product dot ID. So inside of our cart products, remember way back when, is it in our store maybe? Uh, models.py, no. Yeah, so we have this product model. Uh, we can call the, the ID of that to use it to look up the product, right? And let's see up here, have we imported that? Uh, it does not look like we have, so we need to import it. So let's go from store.models. We want to import our product. Okay, so come back down here in our process order function. So for each of those, so it'll loop through there and add the product ID to this variable. So up here, instead of product ID, let's say get product stuff or get product info. So here, let's say get product ID. We also need other things from the product, right? We need the sale price. So let's get the product price. Now remember, this could be an on sale thing or not. So we need to run some logic. So let's go if product dot is underscore sale, then our price will equal the product dot sale underscore price. So if the product is on sale, the price will be the product price, else price will just equal product dot price. Okay, so that looks good there. So now we have the product ID, we have the price, now we need the quantity, and this is a little bit more difficult. So let's get quantity. And let's see, if we go to our store templates, well, actually, we can look in our current templates payments slash billing info. On this page, right here, we're getting the quantity because remember, if we go to our website here and go to checkout, we're getting the quantities on that page, right? So we can look at here, and this is how we do it. We go for key value and quantities dot items. We're saying, hey, if the key equals the product ID, then the value is the number of items of them that we're purchasing. So we can use this same sort of layout, the same sort of logic right here. So let's do that. Uh, now this is obviously not a web page, it's actual, you know, Python. So it's gonna look a little different. We're not using Django tags here for this. So we'll just go for key comma value in our quantities. And this is a function dot items. And this is a function as well, since we're doing it here, we need to use the brackets. Now this quantities, of course, is coming from our cart. This quantity is right here. We're bringing all of our cart stuff in right at the top of this thing. So we get those quantities. Now we can loop through there and we need to know if the key equals our product dot ID, which is this guy, or I guess we could use underscore, but well, we'll just use this for now. So now you'll remember, well, you probably won't remember, but way back when we did all of our cart stuff, for some reason or another, these key value pairs sometimes got switched out as strings instead of integers. So we need to make sure this is an integer. So I'll just wrap this in an integer function and that will do that. So if the key equals the product, that means we've selected it and we can get the items. And that item is just the value, right? So what, what do we want to do with that? Now we've got our order ID, we've got the product ID, uh, where our model go? Wrong model. Uh, you know, let's see. We've got our order ID, we've got our product ID, we know the user already, right? Uh, now we just need the quantities and the price. We've got the price as well. We just did right here. Once we have this, we've got everything we need to now create an order. So we're gonna do it right here and we need to do it inside of this thing because this will loop through for each item, it'll change this, right? So every time it goes to the next item in your cart, this needs to have created the order item already and then move on to the next one. That makes sense, probably not. <laughs> but anyway, so let's create an order item. So let's create order item. And I'm gonna create a variable called create underscore order underscore item. And we're going to set that equal to an order item instance. And now inside of here, we know we need certain things. We need the order, 
So let's go order equals. We need the product. So let's go product equals. We need the user, if there is one. So let's go user equals. We need the quantity. So let's go quantity. Let's spell that right. Quantity, yep, equals. And we need the price, right? So let's go price equals. Now we just need to fill these in, right? So we know what our order ID is because we did that right here. So let's just copy that. So order equals order ID. And actually this should be order underscore ID because these are instances of, you know, these are foreign keys, right? So we need ID numbers to associate them. So all of these first three will be ID. So this is also gonna be product ID. And this is also gonna be user ID, right? So our product ID is, uh, where do we take it? Right here, all right? So there we go. Our user ID, and actually we don't need to do that because we know who our user is. It's just our user because we, let's see, in the last video, we set this up, right? So user is our request.user. We already know that. Okay. So order ID equals order ID, product ID equals product ID, user equals user. Our quantity equals that value that we just got right here, right? And then the price equals, what do we call that? Price. So price equals price. That's it. So that will create an instance, so to speak, of our order. Now we just need to save it just like we saved this guy up here. So let's go create underscore order underscore item dot save. That should do it. So let's go ahead and save this and see if that worked. Let's head back over here. And first, let's go back to our orders. So we're on order four right now. Uh, let's see, our order items, we only have one. So let's go back to order. And let's come in here. We've got now a Ruby programming and one PHP programming. Let's go back to our cart and change this to two just to make it a little more interesting update. Now we've got two of these for 21. We've got one of these for 699. It's on sale. Remember 699, we need to make sure it passes the sale price. So let's go to check out 5094. Got our shipping info. Let's do our billing info. I'm just gonna put some stuff in for now. Pay now. Boom, order placed. Let's come back over here, hit reload. Is there an order five? Yes, there is. Let's go ahead and look at it. It says, all the things it should say. Now, is there a new order item? Yes, there are, there's two of them. How come there's two? Because we ordered two books, right? So this one is gonna be, uh, and it's associated with order five, right? Let's make sure that's correct real quick. Sure enough, order five, right? So we have two of these Ruby programming books. That's correct. Uh, let's also then look at the other one. Uh, order item three, 699, which is the sale price. So that's correct, one of those. And finally, let's look at the order to make sure the total price, 5095 is correct. And sure enough, that is. We can go back to our cart to make sure, 5095. And we've done it. So very cool. Now we also need to do the same thing for the not logged in user, right? So I'm just gonna come down here and let's come up here and let's say, let's just copy all of this stuff and let's just paste it in. Now let's look through this because we need to make some changes because if they're not logged in, there's not an actual user. So that's right there. We did that in the last video here. Uh, order ID, that looks okay. Product ID, that looks okay. All of this looks okay, except for we don't need a user, right? So we'll take that out. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's head back over to the website and log out. All right, now let's add a Python programming book. We'll just do one. Let's now check out shipping address. I'm gonna call myself Tim Elder, Tim at elder.com. Address is one, Chicago, Illinois, 6610, country USA. Continue to billing. 
Fair enough. There's one item. That looks good. That looks good. Name on card. We're not doing anything with this just yet. Hey, now. All right. That looks good. Come back over here. Is there now a new order? Oh, we got to log back in as admin, of course. Order six. Sure enough. Tim Elder. And if we go to order items, there's another order item. It is associated with order six, which is what we just created. Python programming. No user because we were not logged in, right? Oh, there's one of them, they're 1999, and it all seems to work. So, all right, we are moving right along. <laughs> this is a slow grind here, getting all kinds of very sort of interlaced, tricky little things together to get these order and order items all set up. This is all going to make a lot more sense very soon. Hopefully, it's starting to make more sense now that we see the mechanisms we have. And this is important because we want these things associated, but we also we want an order, right? We want to be able to say, okay, here's an order. and print out this thing. This is how much was paid. You know, and then later on we can come back here. We'll probably create a little system that creates a report for us that shows us what items need to go with that. They're already all associated so we can pull them back out anytime we want. We can get the order items from or order. Maybe we'll do that in the next video, but uh, very cool. And we are coming right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out CodeMe.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. That's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. There are over 200,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.